Okay, welcome everyone. May I please have a motion to call the regular business meeting to order? So moved, Charlie. Second, Carol. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And may I please have a motion to move into executive session? Sure for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular person or corporation. So moved, Linda. Second, Carol, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll be back shortly. Okay. All right, welcome back. May I please have a motion to move out of executive session and into public session? So moved, Charlie. Second, Carol, all in favor? Aye. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And may I please have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. So moved. Linda, second. Carol, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Ooh, that's a tough one. All right. Welcome our liaisons, our high school liaisons. Yes, 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 yes. I knew who we meant. Okay. Good evening. I hope everyone had a great break and enjoyed the warm weather last week. The Titans are glad to be back after a break with many exciting events happening. This week at our school is Earth Spirit Week. Earth Club has partnered with so many different clubs and extracurriculars to make this week possible. The Student Council met with Earth Week to help plan out the Spirit Week since they had planned on using a similar format to, to our homecoming Spirit Weeks. They planned multiple activities and events for our students to participate in this week to gain points for their class. For dress-up days, Monday was anything but a backpack day, so you would br bring in anything to replace your backpack. Today was tree hugger day, where students wore beanies, flannels, tie-dye, and earth-friendly clothing. Wednesday is beach day, so students will wear beach attire. Thursday is Antarctica day, and students can wear white or dress up as an Arctic animal. Friday is class color day, where each class has been assigned a color for all four years and will wear it to support their grade. Along with dress-up days, they have planned many activities during lunch blocks or after school. Titan Service Scholars part partnered with Earth Club and Geotech classes to build a food shelf for Eden Gardens, where we had built the Eden Gardens in Rochester. Today was tie-dyeing in the courtyard, where you could make your own decorated clothing. Games such as cornhole, giant chess, and can gym will be set up for students to play tomorrow. And on Thursday, a thrifting fair will be held in the library to recycle and purchase new clothing in an environmentally friendly way. When a student participates in any of the, these activities, they will receive a Titan token that earns points towards your class. The winner of the week will be crowned Earth Spirit Week 2023 champions. In addition, Titan Service Scholars have been making the food shelf for Eden Gardens. They had also been doing a bunch of exciting upcoming projects. We are partnering with Webster's Lady Sewing Club to make dresses for girls in de developing countries. We are so excited to be returning again this year, and this time to make dresses for our international project to the Dominican Republic this July. These dresses mean so much to the community members, and we are also excited to see how happy it makes them. We are also partnering with Eden Gardens once again for our second attendance at the Day of Caring, where we'll return to the gardens and continue working on them so they are ready to be used to grow produce for the community members of Rochester. Freaky Friday de debuts this weekend. This year's cast and crew of the musical have been working extremely hard for the shows this weekend. The cast this year is huge, made up from Thomas and second secondary school students. They perform four shows in total, so make sure to go and see one of them. You can buy your tickets online. Break a leg. <laughs> Before break, Titan crossed the county to attend this year's Rock to Change conference at Gates Shiloh High School. Our students were so glad to be able to attend again this year and had such a great experience. Sports have been in action for several weeks now and we're looking forward to a great season of spring sports. Congratulations to our Athletes of the Week, Catherine R. for flag football and Samir for JV tennis. They have been nominated for their hard work and excellent attitude. Track, baseball, tennis, softball and lacrosse 
All have been doing extremely well in their games and meets, and good luck to the rest of them this season. Yesterday, the girls' flag football team was on the news. They did a cover on Section V flag football, and specifically our team. You can watch on 13wham.com. Congratulations to this year's outstanding senior, Raja Mosier. Thomas faculty and staff selected her to receive this incredible award. We are all so proud of you. She'll be attending a county-wide dinner for each school's outstanding senior. Congratulations again, Raja. Titan students are studying and working hard for upcoming AP exams, but we are all so excited for the warm weather and getting closer to summer. Thank you for your time. Hannah, did we see you on the news? <laughs> yes, I okay. was on the news. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, last Thursday, Schrader inducted 78 new members into our chapter of the National Honor Society. Every member earned this by completing eight or more volunteer hours over the course of this school year. Half of those hours were required to be NHS-sponsored initiatives, meaning the service went back into the school. We are proud to have such a large group of students that have accomplished being inducted into the Schrader National Honor Society. NHS was not only the only honor society with an induction ceremony. We are excited to announce that the National Art Honor Society has also inducted new members into their new chapter. New and returning members were honored in, or were honored into the, or in the Schrader Auditorium with refreshments. This club has grown after two years of its establishment, and we are happy to see the fine arts being honored at Schrader. Spring means a new sports season, and we are thrilled to watch our spring athletes back into action. We are happy to highlight that many of our athletes for this season have been recognized by the Democrat and Chronicles as players to watch. Our girls lacrosse team will be playing Penfield at home tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Our boys lacrosse team won their Saturday game against St. Francis 15-7 and is playing Penfield tonight at 7. Our boys golf team had its home opener on Friday the 14th against Fairport. The baseball team will be playing Rush Henrietta tomorrow at Roth Junior High at 5. And finally, our former state champion softball team will be facing Wellsville at Wellsville High School at 1 p.m. on the 22nd. We wish all of our teams the best of luck in the respective seasons and can't wait to see what they do. Schrader was happy to host Community Arts Day again this year. There were talented dancing and singing performances alongside artists selling merchandise. Student artwork was also put on display featuring all kinds of work from all Webster schools, K through 12th grade. Some representatives from the National Art Honor Society were there running a printmaking booth. It was quite popular with elementary school kids as all you did was dip fruit and vegetable stamps into paint and then press it onto a piece of paper. It was a lot of fun and it was a great way to see the talent that truly resides in Webster. On March 31st, various businesses, trades, and military branches from all around Rochester came to Schrader for a college fair. Students got the opportunity to go down to the gym during their lunch and study halls to ask questions and learn information regarding job opportunities, career paths, and internships. This was a great experience, and thank you to all of the representatives for taking the time to inform and assist Schrader students with their future plans. Another thank you to the counselors for making the career fair possible. The library hosted its first ever book fair that began on Thursday, April 13th and lasted until today. The book fair brought back many nostalgic memories for high school students, while also providing preschoolers with an exciting first ever experience. Intriguing books as well as fun pens, erasers, and journals were sold. All proceeds went towards library programming and reader recognition. On March 28th, Mr. Peck took 35 Schrader students to Clem South Elementary School to make bracelets with the fifth graders. It was a lot of fun for both the high school students and fifth graders as they got to spend time with each other doing a fun activity. That is all for this month. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Sydney. And thanks, Anna. And good luck to the flag football. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Sydney. <laughs> all right, campus news. All right, yeah, moving on. I think so. I think we don't have... Jones, uh, Jones not here tonight. For this, kind of nope. Okay, sounds good. All right, so campus news. If I could please invite Brian Powers and Lisa Benson, both uh, come on up and have a seat. And I'll get started, and then I'll introduce you formally here in just a second here. But I'm going to actually take off right where Sydney left off and just talk briefly about uh, Community Arts Day. So first, first point of Community Arts Day is this was the 46th 
Community Arts Day, which, again, I think that just right there speaks incredible volumes for our community. And it's such a great day. Everybody has it on their calendar. When it comes out, we all circle it, and everybody's there, and it's such a great day. They talked about some of the different art we, artwork and pr presentations and performances. You can see in the pictures there on your screen that we had um, – uh, actually, I don't know if it's on the screen. Garth, uh, Garth Fagan was here and filled the auditorium. It was packed in there. It was fantastic and such a great day. Um, but I also want to make sure that this day doesn't go off without a, an amazing amount of an, an army of volunteers. And so if I could thank all of the students and the staff and the community members for an incredible day uh, of volunteering to make this uh, event happy or um, happen and a, a huge shout out to PTSA and Jenny Haranko for for organizing it so thank you to her and certainly the whole group that she had so what a great day and I look forward to it again next year just like we did this year and now I think it's my turn to turn it over to we have our Willink middle school principal Brian Powers and we also have our uh, elementary Owl Administrator at Schlegel, which is housed at uh, Schlegel Road Elementary School, Lisa Benton. And actually, I think I'm going to ask Lisa to start. Will do. All right. Well, it's very good to see many of the board members again. It was Kate and I were so proud to have you come. Schlegel Road, Schlegel Owl School, as we <laughs> like to call it, um, and see how we're using crew to um, establish a sense of belonging. And of course, I had to bring just a few more crew pictures. We had some pictures of our OWL students in their morning crew meeting. I also have Mrs. Gadero's class there. They're having their family Friday breakfast, which the kids plan the breakfast, they make the placemats. And each week, we increase the level of difficulty of the meal. That was uh, waffles and fruit cups just this past Friday. <laughs> um, on the other side, you can see um, our faculty crews. So I've got um, our fourth grade crew up there, our third grade crew, and what I like to call my mental health, my super crew. Um, <laughs> it's both, uh, <laughs> both buildings together. Um, all of the staff members, whether you're a teaching staff member or a paraprofessional, you're on the crew. So, but of course, we're not only focusing on our students, our staff having a sense of belonging. We want families to have that sense of belonging too. So I've got some more great pictures. <laughs> um, this year, just talking about family belonging, it's just so nice to have the families back in the building again. We did in-person or gave the option for in-person parent-teacher conferences. Um, we've had parents in to uh, be chaperones for us on field trips. And of course, we encourage our families to, you know, anytime uh, PTSA is doing a school-wide event, we want them to go. And some of our families do feel comfortable going. We had a couple of families at the, the these are pictures from the VIP dance. Um, but for some of our families, for the OWL family specifically I'm talking about, um, the scale of those events can be a little overwhelming. <laughs> so um, as an alternative to the VIP dance, we did a Valentine's Day breakfast brunch. And I was, I'm proud to report that we had almost all of our families attend. And what was so great, you know, when, it, when we're thinking about belonging, we're like, this is terrific, we're together, we want the families to feel connected to us as a program. But what we weren't anticipating and was a wonderful thing that happened was that the families were connecting with each other. Because mm -hmm. remember, we pull from all across the district. They're not necessarily going to school with people in the neighborhood, right? Some of them live in Penfield, some of them live out on Salt Road. So with all of us there to help support the kids and keep them moving, the parents had a chance to connect with each other. So next month we're going to do um, Owl Play Day and Picnic at Miracle Field. Same idea, families are welcome. We're gonna eat together, because that's fun. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we're hoping that they'll have other ways that they find connections with each other. And we're gonna keep working with families to make sure that they are feeling that connection, because that's an important part of school too. But of course, Schlegel Owl, we're not the only ones working on belonging for families. <laughs> um, hot off the press here, uh, Friday, uh, these are pictures from Plank North School. They had um, a family gathering in the morning, which they bring all of their students and staff together, and they did a um, kickoff event for their Fill the Bucket uh, campaign. So the kids will all be working, and the staff will all be working together to fill each other's buckets, and they connected it to a, PSA, a PTSA event in the evening, the glow party, and those are the great pictures that you're seeing there. <laughs> I wish I went, that looks really fun. Um, another way that we're bringing families into our schools is using parent volunteers. 
Here we have an example from Plank South. These are parents that came in to help with um, their colonial days. And we're also bringing parents in for literacy night. These are also um, pictures from uh, Plank South. You can see the beautiful new library there. Um, and State Road also had a very well attended literacy night this month. Then, of course, it's open house season. <laughs> so these are pictures from last week. Uh, Clem North had their open house. Um, Schlegel Alice having our open house later in the month. And um, Clem South, not exactly an open house, but they are bringing families in on Saturday for Earth Day. They're going to be cleaning up the courtyard together. So that's just some of the ways that we're having fun with our families. And I'll hand it over to my esteemed colleague, Mr. Powers. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Lisa, and uh, thank you, members of the board and senior leadership, for having us here tonight. And um, for those of you who are brave enough uh, to join us at Willink uh, <laughs> a few weeks ago for our staff chili cook-off, I'm glad you're still standing. <clears throat> and uh, we won't talk about who the winner. No, was no, no. Tonight. We know. We all know who the winner was. <laughs> uh, so our secondary roundup. Um, very happy to share. Starting out with Spry Middle School. Uh, a, a great event, the charity basketball game raised over $3,000 for Willink, uh, I'm sorry, not Willink, Willow uh, Domestic Violence Center. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, Spry hosted a family night and their small ensemble concert. And again, just great to see uh, smiles on faces and, and um, a great charity event. Took the liberty of adding two slides for Willink. Um, uh, one, I want to recognize and celebrate our Science Olympiad state qualifier. So, Ms. Montone and all of our students, you can see they're getting on the bus to go to Syracuse last weekend, um, celebrating their academic program and achievement. They competed uh, superbly uh, in the regional qualifier and had a wonderful time uh, in Syracuse last weekend before they returned about 9 o'clock on Saturday night. So congratulations to all of you and I just to the parents as well who were in at Willink after hours uh, testing planes and uh, B&G turning off ventilation systems for them. It was, it was definitely a, a district effort. Uh, I also want to recognize our amazing students who uh, just this past weekend uh, held their the Willink student run play, which was Peter Pan, uh, climate and culture board goal number two, of course. And I, I just want to take a minute to recognize uh, the student run play is something uh, that Willink started before my time there, but I think it's just a, a wonderful way to to see student advocacy, agency, and voice. Uh, our student directors Ava W, Isabella S, Isabella S. Elise S. and Mia F. and our advisor Janice Caruso. It was an amazing play and as they closed up Saturday night and highlighted the fact that they put this together in six weeks, I couldn't believe it. It was, uh, it was an amazing play. So um, hats off to all of you. Great. And Owl Middle wrapped up the third quarter making academic progress in pursuit of our goal to increase the percentage of students meeting or exceeding proficiency in curriculum and content specific standards. Owl Middle eighth graders are engaged in three credit-bearing high school courses. Mm. Top left, eighth grade students are building lamps in DDP. They design their product on the computer, engrave their lamp with a personal design, and are uh, now staining and wiring their lamps. The top right, eighth grade students completing a mitosis lab with Oreos and sprinkles. And the other pictures show uh, a busy spring focused on academics and personal growth while also enjoying the changes in weather. Um, and I just want to add, um, it's, it's wonderful to have our Owl Middle program at Willink um, and to, to see all that, that they do and to see our, our students and staff thriving. Over to Webster Schrader High School, uh, One Warrior Week uh, is what uh, Schrader would like to highlight. And you can see uh, many events, ping pong, career fair, healthy activities day, hot chocolate from the PTSA, uh, <laughs> and warriors at feeder elementary schools making that K-12 connection. At Goal, uh, similar to Schrader, uh, held a family week of events. Uh, you can see them, I believe it's at Hot Shots downtown where they did some team building activities 
and uh, you can just see the uh, the family week of events. Uh, hopefully, a capture there of, of all the activities they did to to do some uh, team building and belonging uh, the week before the break. Back over to Thomas, our outstanding senior was mentioned in our campus report from Thomas. Congratulations! Um, and. Uh, Titans Take Japan uh, was featured in the newsletter where uh, several of our Thomas students had the opportunity to travel to Japan uh, with Mrs. DeWitt. Uh, and I want to also thank our Titans Ladies Lax program who, uh, uh, at least for the second year that I'm aware of, spent their spring break cleaning up the Thomas and Willink campuses. So uh, thank you to the Thomas Ladies Lax program. And finally, our Owl Thomas High School uh, completed the March Mammal Madness Tournament. Students in environmental science had been given a list of different mammals and are asked to research everything about the mammal and create a presentation. Over the last few weeks, students then had the opportunity to discuss and debate which mammal would win in a head-to-head -head battle based on their research. We tracked this tournament on a bracket, which can be seen on bottom right pictures. Might need to zoom in, but it was created by Mrs. Sevor outside of Owl at Thomas. Uh, in the top right, you will see our March Mammal Owl winners, Mr. Hilaris and Christopher. Mr. Indivino can, Mr. Indivina, former student, uh, can, be, can also be seen holding his last place trophy. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> Don't blame it on your seventh grade social studies teacher. Our bottom left pictures show uh, Christian and Bobby who chose to do face masks in one of our OWL social emotional learning lessons on self-care and wellness, one of the many topics OWL incorporates into our SEL lessons. Next week, we get ready to head to a Red Wings game where we will get a chance to listen to a few speakers before the game regarding careers in sports. So again, thank you for uh, the opportunity to share some highlights from our secondary schools. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Brian, and thank you, Lisa, not only for the presentation tonight, but for your leadership and commitment to our students and uh, certainly to our families as well, so, and your staffs. So, and that's all we have tonight for Campus News. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Next up, we have Encore. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> The light is on. It, it is on. I concur. Okay. A teacher at Thomas, but also part time TOSA on special assignment supporting the Encore program, and Eva Burns, who is Encore teacher at Club South. Fun fact Eva was my mentor teacher my first year teaching before wow. we came to Webster. She was all my success. All yeah. That's right. Success That's right. Yeah. I owe everything to Eva. <laughs> um, I'll also say Dan Crowley is also in the crowd tonight, another Encore teacher in the district. So we had this really tiny seed of a, an idea about Encore before it was even called Encore. Um, we knew we had the New York State Computer Science and Digital Fluency Standards headed our way, um, and they actually don't have to be implemented until next year. So this is Webster out in front of the curve. Um, so this is a program that we were excited to dream about, but I'm so excited for you to hear from the people who actually made it happen. So thank you to you all and those of you, the team that couldn't be here, because um, it took quite an army to pull off the creation of a whole entire program for our elementary students. So I'm, I think I'm going to turn it over to Francine to kick us off tonight. Sounds great. Thank, thank you. you. So Aaron said it quite eloquently. This has been a dream for the district. Uh, Mr. Neenan has been beyond excited about um, letting us dream. And I can't thank um, Eva and Jamie and Dan and all the crew that's actually working on um, this wonderful curriculum for our students. Um, Joe, thankfully, is a partner in crime with me, um, and we get to have great conversations, but really just watching what it is that they've done this year. I stumbled upon them last August when I started my position in the library, and they were a functional group. They were laughing, they were talking, um, they were engaged in like, what are we going to do you know, with um, this curriculum and with our students, and a lot of excitement. 
And it was my first time working with Jamie and Sage. I knew both of them, you know, but just getting to see how they um, brought their expertise from all the work they've been doing in the district, you know, with our secondary students and how we could actually build this program um, for our students K-12. So it's quite exciting. So for this evening, um, before you are the discussion points that we're going to highlight for you briefly, um, just keep in mind any questions you have, we'll, we'd love to answer them at the end. There's going to be a lot of information that comes out. You might be shocked by some of the language that they use or some of the vocabulary. Um, so if something's not familiar to you, you know, we'll be happy to answer any of those questions. So we'll talk about the why, um, which you already heard a little bit about that, the how, the building blocks um, that we've been uh, working on all year and continue to do so. And I, sh I shouldn't say we, they, because it's really their work. I mean, this is grassroots from our teaching staff. Um, the work that's been put into it and then the future. And then we'll have open it up to any questions that you may have, okay? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe. Good evening, board. How are you this evening? Hi, um, good. We're happy to be here. We're happy to um, highlight this program because it's an amazing program. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the why. Um, the why really relates to New York State implementing the computer science and digital fluency standards. Um, and they started, New York State and the Board of Regents started work on these in uh, 2018. Um, and then they released the draft in January of 2020. Um, which we know was wonderful timing in terms of things that were going on in schools that year. Um, but throughout that year, um, they were able to actually finalize um, the standards. And really their impetus for the standards was, um, you know, technology, knowledge, and skills are vital for full participation in a 21st century life, which we know is super important for our students and our kids to learn as they're moving throughout their lives at this point. And so in the timeline of events, they finalized the standards in December of 2020, which gave us all of 2021 and 2022 to kind of dream and think about how Webster could best implement these standards. And so as we move forward through that year, um, we began to dream about what we could do. Um, and when I say dream, there was a lot of us involved in dreaming this process, um, teachers, administrators, um, committees, digital citizenship committee talked about um, how we could possibly dream and work through some of these standards. And a lot of the things that came up was um, we needed to be equitable access for every kid K-5. It had to be in all of our buildings. Um, it had to be an engaging program. Kids had to be very engaged in order to, to learn these things. Um, we wanted to have them some experiential learning pieces in there. And then we wanted to have them make sure that they we're giving problem solving skills. How could we grow their problem solving skills using these standards? And then of course, the elementary kids, we want them to be curious. We want them to wonder. Technology is an amazing thing. They're already curious about it, but how can we highlight that and use that curiosity to build on that? We want it to be, have them be creative thinkers. How can we engage these kids to be creative thinkers because the world is changing fast and we need them to think and use the skills that we're going to teach them. And then we always want them to wonder. We want them to dream. What can you do? Um, what can you come up with as a kid? And then, of course, we want them to use their investigation skills and investigate new technologies and be able to kind of look and wonder at those things that we're, we're showing them. With all of those things on the table, we said, okay, we really need a plan. How do we get through and be able to create this program? Um, luckily, we have uh, Mr. Freeman, who's wonderful with the finances. And in uh, spring of 2020, he was able to help us with the budgeting process to be able to start this program um, at the elementary schools. Um, and then um, really our next piece of that was to find and hire content specialists. We were lucky enough to have Jamie uh, Fagan and Sage Miller, and, and Jamie actually happened to be part of the committee that developed the standards. So we were already kind of having a leg up with some content specialists and some, some wonderful resources at our disposal. Um, and luckily they said yes. And then <laughs> um, the next thing we needed to do is we needed, we needed to secure some elementary visionaries, um, really some staff who were excited and wanted to jump inside of a new program and actually build something that had never been built before. And so um, we were lucky enough to, to go out and find seven amazing teachers, one for each building. 
um, and I'm going to let them uh, take away and, and talk about the real things. But then we tasked them with building the program. And we said, what we want you to do is we want you to dream, we want you to learn, we want you to build it, we want you to fail, we want you to rework it, and then we want you to grow. And that's really kind of all we gave them. <laughs> and we said, go do it. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jamie, who's really going to give you some meat and potatoes about the program. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I want to kind of be a bit redundant with what's already been said, um, because I think that's important to stress that these standards were created out of nothing. These aren't redone math standards or literacy standards. Um, and yeah, the pandemic threw you know, a little bit of a curve at us when we were designing them. Um, I think a few of us felt like it wasn't ever going to make it to light, uh, but it did, um, and we you know, we're able to move through and create something that I think isn't just about computer science. So I think that's the message you'll hear from what I'm gonna share with you. So out of the standards, uh, there was a vision. Uh, every student will know how to live productively and safely in a technology dominated world. This includes understanding essential features of digital technologies and why and how they work and how to communicate and create using those technologies. Um, there was a principles that help guide us which we'll find in a lot of New York State standards, but equity and access, uh, which I think the Webster Central School District's commitment to having this to all uh, students, K through five, uh, interdisciplinary connections, coherence, and relevance and engagement were big pieces that were guiding the uh, guiding principles uh, of the standards and the vision that we had there. Um, the standards, um, as we implement them, um, we recognize the importance of meeting the needs of the whole child recognizing that a well-rounded education, positive learning environment, strong home school connection, and high expectations all contribute to student success. And that's gonna sound like a pretty standard line of introducing standards. Um, but there's a book I'm currently reading that I wanna share a passage with you because it's more than just computer science. Uh, computer science does not only belong to the STEM uh, disciplines. Similarly, the le learning of a written language does not belong only to the language arts of an English class. Computer science engages children in critical thinking. This type of thinking belongs to every discipline. Computer science is, is for those who want to problem solve technically and for those searching for new ways to, of expression and communication. Computer science is for storytellers and engineers. Most of the dimensions of the human experience, the cognitive, the social emotional, the language, the physical and the moral can be displayed and addressed by a well-designed computer science playground just like in the physical playground. And that has kind of been what our approach has been to developing something that's engaging and going beyond what we all might think of computer science. So where are we in the Webster Central School District? Well, our focus has been on intellectual growth. Uh, when learning about computer science, students encounter powerful ideas such as algorithms, uh, representation, control structures, and modularity. And those seem like big terms when we're talking about K through five, <laughs> but we're getting there. Uh, these ideas are personally useful and have roots in intuitive knowledge and understanding algorithms requires comprehending sequencing and that order matters. Algorithms set the building blocks of math and literacy. Students are learning by experimenting and by making mistakes, fixing their bugs, and problem solving. Students are learning how to manage frustration and how to persevere toward finding a solution rather than giving up when things get challenging. Uh, they fall and start over, and they are developing a muscle for forgiving their own mistakes and those of others. Computer science is not a set of technical skills, but a new type of literacy and personal expression valuable for everyone. And then there are the standards, the concept areas. Um, and this is what we've been focusing on this year, is implementing the standards within these concept areas. And this is the technical part. Right, so the first area uh, concept that we have is impacts of computing. You know, these standards are to promote an understanding that technology is evolving, and we need to find our place in society through different lenses, personal, social, cultural, you know, with accessibility, the legal, economic, and ethical. I mean, these standards are written K-12, but we need to start somewhere, so we're starting in our elementary schools. Uh, computational thinking. This includes both core concepts as algorithms and variables, core practices such as abstraction, decomposition, 
data, analy data analysis, modeling, and simulation. And, and these are not, they are all, they are vital, not only to the design and development of computer programs, but also uh, to the strategic use of computational power to solve problems across disciplines. This isn't just about computer science. This is building the ability to solve problems by decomposing them and finding a solution through a series of steps. Uh, the third area is networks and uh, system designs. This is the part that I helped write. Uh, these standards aim to prepare students to understand the basic functioning of the computing systems and networks that are used as fundamental tools in our personal and professional lives. Uh, one of the bigger ones that I think uh, that I like a little bit more is the cybersecurity one. Uh, these standards prepare students to understand why data and computing resources need to be protected, who might access them, and why they might do so, whether intentionally or mal intentionally malicious or not. It is important that students know how to employ basic safeguards to protect data, computing resources, and how to appropriately respond if a breach occurs. And then the last one, digital literacy. These standards refer to the ability uh, to leverage computing technology to appropriately access digital information, to create, share, modify artifacts, and to interact and collaborate with others. Digital literacy includes understanding the benefits and implications of using digital technologies to be successful in our contemporary world. So those are the big concept areas. We also uh, are working on our keyboarding skills. So there are keyboarding instruction expectations in the next gen English language arts learning standards. So we are exploring keyboards, both digital and physical. Uh, students are receiving instruction in keyboarding uh, using typing.com and with a focus on technique over speed. So how are we doing all of this at the elementary level? <laughs> uh, it's magic. It's mostly smoke and mirrors, but really the true heroes of this work are the Encore teachers, Amanda Valenti, Jen Parlett, Dave Gor uh, Gorski, Brandy Miniman, Bill Ambler, Eva Burns, Emily Cooper, Dan Crowley, and Davina Mayer. Thank you. So um, I'm Eva Burns. I'm a teacher at Clem South Elementary. I've been teaching for about 25 years, 22 at Clem South. I've taught second, third, and fourth grade. And I can honestly say that this experience has been so different and so exciting um, and very, um, I can't think of the word right now because I just lost my train of thought. But it's been such a great experience to be able to work with all of these people. And when I first, um, when we were first talking about this program, talking about a leap of faith, it totally was a leap of faith for um, us as elementary teachers because when we first heard of the position, we didn't it was still in the dreaming phase. <laughs> we heard we might be teaching health and some computer science and some STEM activities and maybe even um, Spanish. But then this summer we met and we heard about the standards and we met Jamie and Sage and um, really got down to, wow, this is really gonna be exciting. We get to build from the ground up. Um, we get to take these standards and really have time to try things out. As a classroom teacher, it is so difficult at times to take a big leap and try a different kind of robot or a science activity just because if you fail, you've, it's, it's hard to get that time back. But to be able to collaborate with the six other Encore teachers and Jamie and Sage has just been amazing. Because not only have I um, learned from Jamie and Sage, but I think Jamie and Sage have learned a lot from us as well, because they get to come down to the elementary school to see um, what kind of students are going to be coming up to them and um, how kindergarten is very similar and very different than um, the <laughs> students that they work with. Um, but we definitely call this year zero because we have never done anything like this before. Um, it's the time to look at the standards and to build the framework. Um, the group of teachers that I work with have all different kinds of experience from kindergarten through fifth grade, obviously, but to be able to take a lesson and teach the lesson and to be able to say, hey, I'm having trouble with my kindergarten group here. There's an expert who has been teaching kindergarten who I can go to to say, hey, why don't you try this? 
and our lessons just get better and better each time we're able to talk to each other, which we are, because I know teaching in Webster for so long, we definitely want consistency between all seven elementary schools. That is very, very difficult to do when you have to think about science, social studies, math, everything else, and have all of those teachers. But with Encore, it's been great because we've been able to meet regularly. We plan together. We have a shared drive where we're constantly going back and forth talking about um, how to teach the lessons, what to improve upon, what the kids are doing, um, how to get everybody involved, and the fact that what I'm doing at Clem South is also happening at Schlegel and is also happening at DeWitt. Is it gonna be different? Yes, it's gonna be different. We have seven different teachers, seven different personalities, seven different teaching styles. However, the concepts are still there and they're still getting the same kind of opportunities. And what's also really exciting is that every student in our elementary schools are experiencing these kind of things. All of the different terminology that Jamie talked about with the standards Everybody from kindergarten all the way up through fifth grade, regardless if they're special ed, if they're being enriched, whatever their, their academic level is, they are getting all of these different experiences. And finding the different activities that they're doing and the concepts that they're learning. I know as a classroom teacher, one of the things that was always difficult was problem solving and perseverance. And Sometimes when something would be really difficult, kids would just tend to give up and be, that was always something that we were always working on. But I'm finding with the Encore classes and the things that we're doing, because you're not expected to succeed the very first time. When you're coming up with a program, they sometimes have to do it 50 times in order to get it to work, or it's expected that you're gonna have to go back and redo it. And that's starting to carry over into other academic areas. The teachers come back and they're like, wow, you know, I'm finding when they're doing these math activities, their perseverance level is so much higher. They're bringing other vocabulary terms back into the classroom and throughout the day that you never would have thought a kindergartner would be able to define or to say. Um, one of the things is um, using the term algorithm. You might have heard Jamie mention that quite a few times. But when you think about the term algorithm, when I was a classroom teacher, we might talk about it in math a few times. In fact, if you think about it now, can you think of the definition of an algorithm? Would anybody like to share what they think an algorithm is? It's OK if you don't. Well, we happen to have a short little video which shows you kids from the seven elementary schools, K through five, defining that word and also answering a couple of other questions for us as well. <laughs> Algorithm is steps of things that you, you have to follow. The constructions that you follow and like, here's an example, like how to wash your hands. First, go to the sink, then put water on your hands and, and then put soap on your hands, then scrub them, rinse, and then dry. An algorithm is basically a pattern or like a set of steps that you do each day, like brushing your teeth. Um, an algorithm is something that like technically repeats itself and steps that you follow always to do the same thing, such as making a sandwich. You're always gonna take two pieces of bread and put whatever toppings you want on it and put it back together. I really like when we do these hands-on projects that make it fun to learn. The bees. The bee bots? Making them go. Making them do the algorithm. Robots. The ones that go really fast. Um, my favorite part of Encore is how we learn about new and old things in computer science. And it helps us with like jobs we would like to do in the future with computer science and the future stuff with computer science. Taking out the taking out parts of 
a code that does not work and try and putting in new things to see if that would work. Where you fix the mistake you make on the algorithm. Um, to fix like code that's not right and like that stuff. It's kind of like taking the algorithm apart so that you don't have to, um, so that like if there's a problem with it, that you can debug it by taking it apart. Debugging is when you get rid of a bug in a computer. A bug is a, is a thing that's like messing with the algorithm. Having eight characters, having two of the characters be letters, and having one of at least one of the characters be an, an uppercase, and one of the characters be either an at sign, a hashtag, or an exclamation mark. Um, by taking like one of your favorite phrases, such as "I love cats" or "I love dogs," and capitalizing different ones and putting random symbols inside of different words. Eight characters, numbers, letters, and special characters. You should probably have at least a couple numbers and some odd symbols and at least eight characters. It needs capitals and lowercase numbers, a special character, and at least eight to 12 characters. Up. I just want to make sure, do you have anything else you want to share? Because sometimes when we stop, is there anything else you want to add? I think this has been a great experience, a great year zero. Mm -hmm. I know next year is just going to be even better. Great, thank and you. thank you for the opportunity for letting us do this with the children. It's been great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you good? I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Well, as you see the future, what does the future bring? Um, the work that they have been engaged in as the professionals um, has, has started in August and they, they're continuing to build. So for example, um, Jamie and Sage went to the elementary schools each day and watched and helped, helped a lot at K-1 and two maybe. <laughs> um, and I, I remember like hearing some of their comments like, oh my, you just don't know what it's like in one of those classrooms from the secondary lens. Um, but the, what they were doing is watching to see what was happening and then connecting and making sure the standards, because that's our goal, right? We're here to educate our students and align ourselves in the standards that New York State has provided for us. And so for next year, uh, they'll continue this work, but there's going to be a lot of shifting because this was zero. And so the fifth graders had similar activities, um, similar ways of addressing the standards as the third and fourth graders. And now we have to make that shift because the fourth graders have had them. And so there's a lot of work that they'll still continue to engage in. So the summer, I um, anticipate seeing them perhaps in the library again. I'm not sure where they're going to go. Um, but just seeing the teachers really doing the planning and then Jamie and Sage connecting and watching the standard piece as well. Um, I think just what, what has happened this year from my lens, um, being in Webster, knowing how much we value computer, how much or computer computers in general, um, but problem solving and critical thinking. This is in alignment with the work that we need to do for our students so that when they do move on into the real world after their high school graduation, they really are critical thinkers and problem solvers. And I think this course is really going to help support that. And we're just at the beginning. So stay tuned for updates you know, each year. and. Um, be sure to be looking out and asking young children, like, so what's an algorithm? Or what about those bugs in those computers? Um, kids really, really have the language, and it's exciting to hear and see um, and, and dream, you know, what it is that they can actually do with the technology and, and meeting these standards. Joe? Yeah, and also um, the next iteration of this is how do we dream about the next level? How do we think about exposing um, our 6 to 12 teachers to the standards um, and just kind of looking at that that next uh, future so with that I think we'll turn it over and ask are there any questions today and I just want to say too as we've been doing our tours in the schools and going into the encore classes exactly what you said tonight we saw in person 
Um, so even when we went in and the little one, they started, they educated us with starting with, you know, just giving us instructions and we didn't know what we were doing. They just gave us the instructions and we drew what they told us to draw. And all of us were a hot mess compared to <laughs> what they said. And, and they said right away, like you can see from the instructions that we're giving you, how important it is, that how specific we are because you're repeating what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about the playground, like that's what we saw. We saw kids programming their robots to go to their different places. They were excited about it. It was fun. And what I really love about it too is that when you talk about equity, you're exposing this to, to boys and girls, um, everyone of all backgrounds. And what we saw when we talked to uh, universities and colleges recently in admissions, some of the things they talked about we actually saw today. So they talked about how you know you see such an interest that boys are usually exposed to that more than girls are in certain instances of different backgrounds. And so this is a way to, to really expose them early so that they can see if that ignites something that they're really mm -hmm. passionate or interested in in a playground environment, which mm -hmm. is fun. So catching it so early. The other thing we heard a lot about, too, was how students recently, freshmen coming into college, especially after COVID, are really struggling with communication and perseverance and how to not give up. And that they're seeing that that's actually a struggle right now where kids are giving up instead of really pushing through. So when you talk about that expectation to fail and debugging and teaching those kids at an early age, it's so important. I think you're gonna to start to see that filter through. And it's one of the things I try to even explain in a work, any work environment, whether it's operations or business, um, you expecting to fail, we're gonna to put together a process and you can expect that that's probably gonna fail. Like we're going to have to rework this several times, and when you go in with that expectation, you're not you don't you're not self conscious, you're not afraid of failing, and you're not you expect it, and you know now we're going to work on that continuous improvement by by working through that, mm -hmm. and I think that is so important, and especially teaching kids that because they have this expectation that if they fail, they've failed, they they stink at it, and it's okay to be. Instead, we're saying you're going to fail, totally expect it. And then this time, what are you going to fix? How do you debug it? And it follows through, like you talked about, it's not just in computer science. It follows through to, to everything you do. When we're writing manuals on how to do something, it's an algorithm. And I can't tell you how often we think we have a, a set of manuals correct, and then we follow the steps and realize we left out a really key important that is now completely messed up. <laughs> You are now not where you expected to be. And these kids are learning it so young. Mm -hmm. So everything you said on there, I was just so impressed. And it did reiterate what we saw mm -hmm. on all of our, and our tools for our tours for Encore. And so I'm just, I just love it. And I love that you're already thinking about how, we, for, for this being ground zero, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And to keep at it through COVID when most, most of that stuff went to the side, like you were real, you had a focus on survival mode. So the fact that you kept at it, even throughout COVID is fantastic and we're ahead of the standards, you know, when they're coming out. So mm -hmm. I just, I think you guys, what a fantastic job. And it has, it totally reiterates, reiterates what we've seen in our tours too. Thank you for letting me but go on. <laughs> <laughs> One question on the budgeting. So when, when New York standards came out, they came out with this new standard, did they, did they provide any budgeting for that, any financial, or was that another like, so we had to find the funds to do that? Fantastic. That was Brian Freeman. Right. And that's where Brian Freeman comes in. Well, that was a great, you know, that was, you guys have done an excellent job on it. Thank you. I just want to say, Jamie, thank you. And Sage, thank you for taking the leap of faith because, and, and to all the Encore teachers, it's, it's hard to do something that there's not a manual written about. And, and like Shanna said, we've gone into these classrooms this year and it's been amazing. And the consistency too across, across the district is unbelievable. So I applaud you all. Um, so looking forward to the next coming years and, and hearing, because I think our students will be educating their families because they're now <laughs> learning at warp speed and we'll be able to teach some of our parents a few things, so thank you. And grandparents. And grandparents, <laughs> too. <laughs> I gotta go, well, I'll, yeah, go ahead, either no, one of you. Sad. Okay, <laughs> all right, and grandparents, <laughs> I think, Charlie? Charlie? No, just great, great work with the 21st century skills. It's great to see the digital citizenship already mm -hmm. at such a young age as well. It's, it's really imperative that they are exposed to this early in, in education. Can I say one thing, Brett? For you. Yep, go ahead. Go. Is okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, there, I'm, I'm proud of Webster's Instructional Program, but when I go out, this is a program I brag about mm -hmm. because it is 
impressive to see what has happened in a year. So thank you all for your hard work and dedication to this little seed that we gave you a year ago <laughs> to dream about. So thank you. And sorry, you want to, oh, yeah, you want to go? Go yeah, I've been saying I have been holding my breath to say so many <laughs> things. So I've just I only got about ten minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I will keep it brief. Um, but it is this is amazing, and I've been excited about uh, tonight's presentation. But I've been really excited about uh, this and what it's going to do for our kids. Mm -hmm. So a couple things. Now tonight we've heard the word dream a lot. It takes a dream team to make this happen. And that is the part that I really want to focus on. And it is the leap of faith that Linda was talking about. It's what we see on our boardwalks and everything you're saying about, we've talked to three different colleges in the area about what they're asking for from the incoming freshmen, but also from um, employers. You know, some of our kids go right out into the workforce and it is about that perseverance thing. When opening day last year, uh, this past year I should say, I mentioned when we had a few different examples of champions of education, and there was a little part of uh, that part of the speech that said, and we have some things on the horizon. And this is absolutely mm -hmm. number one in my mind when I was thinking of that, and when I think of champions for education, right here in front of us, this is half of the team because I know half, the other half isn't here with us tonight, but thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart because this is a game changer. And then the one last thing I will say is, Jamie, I'm gonna need the name of that book. I wanna read it. <laughs> so. I was wondering, I had my pencil. I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> the name of the book. The name of it, the name of it is, I had written down, Beyond Coding, How Children Learn Human Values Through Programming. Great, thank you. Cool. And, I, and, I, and I, last thing from us is, uh, uh, I think this is this is a group effort. It's not just our group, um, but it's a support from the district. Um, this is special, and it does cross all sorts of disciplines. This mm -hmm. is this is a really good thing that we're doing. We are leading the way. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is doing this. Mm -hmm. Fairport is doing something similar, um, but I believe we've caught them, and we're doing really well. Not that it's a competition. <laughs> no, 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 um, it, is. it totally is. <laughs> I know it is. But, uh, <laughs> We just, it's, this is special. This is, is something that Webster can hang its head on. And um, we already have a really good his history teaching at the high school. We have a lot of students that are in big tech companies working in the computer science field. Um, but that's just one avenue. What we're doing is creating citizens in this world so they can exist, they can create, uh, and they continue to move us forward. Yeah. Well said. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. So, thanks. All right. Thank you. With Thank that, you. can I have a motion to approve the instruction report as presented? So move. Carol, second. Shanna, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. On to board business. We have, it is, you're no, right, it's the Brian Freeman show, she said. <laughs> Should I wait for the room to clear like that? Yeah, it usually does, right? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yep. Agreed. All right. Are we ready? I'm on. Here we All go. right. <laughs> uh, first order of business this evening is the February Treasurer's Report. Um, and February could be the least active financial month right up there with August uh, where they first approve it. And then we fill out forms usually every quarter. Um, but then we get the remainder of it once we finalize the grant. So it's usually into the next fiscal year. So we have to, you know, okay. do some accounting. So it, generally the federal is always lagging. So our expenses always outpace the revenues. Okay. Thank you. With that motion to approve the February 2023 treasurer's report as presented. So, so we'll move Linda. Second. Carol. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, next up is just the budget adoption resolution uh, before you. Uh, nothing has changed on the budget horizon um, since we last met last week. Um, I th think today we officially got another 10-day extender uh, from the state um, with really, I believe, the only hang-up that uh, we're seeing get reported back to us is the same, same. same bail reform and... 
um, some of the housing stuff. Uh, everything else seems to be f uh, fleshed out and some of it's leaking out. So, like, so there's really no changes to anything that we, we've expected. So um, we have to move forward with adopting our budget because like I said before, our timelines don't change. And so, Brian, we talked that, you know, we have no choice. We have to go through with what our budget is, even mm -hmm. though we have no um, commitment on revenue from the state. Um, and then we would just make budget amendments. If yeah, if something drastic to, if something changed, changes. If we had to, yes. All right. And if anyone wants to see those, they're on the website. Everything's online. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. And when we, as we go to our PTSA meetings, too, that's what's something I'm, I've been putting the link in there and reiterating to people to go and look at the, the budget links. Mm -hmm. All right. With that motion to approve the resolution for the adoption of the 2023-24 budget. So moved, Charlie. Second, Carol. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. The next two approvals look very, very similar, uh, but they are slightly different. Um, and have slightly different purposes. So the first one up is the property tax report card. And really that is just uh, relaying the information from the tax cap um, in its kind of formula in a very prescribed, every school district has to um, fill this form out this way. We upload it to the state site and uh, Mr. Neenan certifies it. And uh, in about two weeks, it gets released statewide. I just will call attention to kind of BI, that column right there. When that's zero, that means we're tax cap compliant um, on this form. Then a couple years ago, they expanded it to ask districts for where they are with their reserves at a snapshot in time. So you put down the end of the month March balance and then they ask you to project what is going to happen at the end of June. So you can see I'm predict predicting uh, we should end the year uh, pretty well. Um, so I'm estimating, um, and a lot of that has to do with uh, the reserve interest revenue increasing substantially, um, adding some funds across the board with some of our reserves. And just as a side note, there are more reserves. So if you went and compared us to another district, a district might have other reserves listed these are just all that we have currently there are other reserves that you can legally hold that the district doesn't have so some other districts might have slight variations of that so that's the property tax report card and then attached with that is the budget notice that gets published with our budget materials this is what goes home to all the homes and this really focuses on the budget a little bit more as you can see, but it still has the same property tax stuff. They've kind of made them very similar uh, over the last few years. So it, it just really lays out what a contingency budget would look like too, and then the three parts of the budget as well, um, and then what propositions we have, and then our best guess of what the basic star savings would be. So in an ideal world, maybe the state would blend these two together uh, instead of making two separate documents, but we have two separate documents to approve. Okay. Questions on any of them? Okay. Okay. All right, the motion to approve the property tax report card and budget notice. So move Shanna, second Linda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nothing. All right. All right, so next up is the Monroe One preliminary budget for approval as presented. Um, they have included who is uh, up for election for the Monroe One board and then all in their um, kind of backgrounds. But then really um, on page 11 and on is the meat and potatoes of what the Monroe One budget is and um, all the different components uh, of what all the districts, um, you know, contribute and pay into. So. Any questions on the, on the BOCES budget? Question? No, we were looking at some of the names. Um, one, we didn't know if you could do your school and BOCES. I think so, because I think Amy's be, on there. Yeah, that's right. Right. I, I didn't know if she I didn't catch that was before. expiring oh. and she was leaving. That's why I questioned gotcha. that. Yeah. All right. Maybe you're right. Mm-hmm. 
All right, uh, with that then, motion to approve the 2023-2024 BOCES budget and election of candidates to the BOCES Board of Education. Each board seat needs to be voted on separately. So do we vote for the budget vote first? The first? Okay, cool. Okay. Yep. Okay. So is that a roll call? I'll first for the budget. First for the budget. Second, Carol. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the second one is the BOCES Board of Education seat, correct? We have to do each one separate. Okay. So Motion for the BOCES Board of Education candidates. Call them each out. Amy West. So Amy West is the first one. Okay. 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 Oh, I see. I did not have so this. Do you want all in favor? I don't remember. I oh, make a motion. motion. I make a motion. I'll second. For Amy West. Make a motion, make a motion Amy for Amy West. Second, Shanna. All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion for Lisa Levin. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're on Rebecca Hicks. And I'll make a motion for Rebecca Hicks. Motion, Linda. Second, myself. All in favor? Aye. 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 Got it. That's what yeah, I meant by separately. Okay. <laughs> I, know, exactly. I should have had this. That's my fault. Is that good? No, sorry, gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. okay. No, you're good. It's all right. It's all right. All right, so now it's a BOCES lease approval, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So next up is uh, we're trying to get our ducks in a row um, based off of um, you know the conversation we had with workshop three and really trying to get moving on the instructional background with the wiring, cabling, the wiring and cabling project. So it is a process to get this approved. Um, so this is the first step is to have the board approve the documents that are attached um, and then BOCES approves it, but then SED has to approve it. So what we're trying to do is time this perfectly. So we have approval July 1 with the new budget going into it uh, effect so that way we could get some work done in the summer and get all the stuff here as quick as possible um, so we, we're not waiting until the new fiscal year to start that process um, BOCES has said we could go ahead and start that process before and um, hold off on the official uh, start date till July 1 should you know because it's all contingent on the budget passing okay. <laughs> Um, like the project itself or just the uh, approval? The approval. Just one resolution to approve it. Mm -hmm. I just have a quick question, Brian. And, mm -hmm. and if you have to get back to me, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. So on the liabilities, you know, BOCES lays out, you know, if the equipment fails to meet the required specifications or fails to address the needs of the district, BOCES shall have no liability or responsibility to the district. Is that because it's going to lie with the direct contractor? Correct. Okay. Yeah, in, in essence, BOCES acts as a... Um, a pass-through okay um, an intermediary they're the official of SED to approve the lease program um, they do a lot of the paperwork for us they do the borrowing they give us the aid they do the ordering but if you know whatever company is installing it isn't mm -hmm. up to our specs or something goes wrong it's it's not BOCES issue it's it's our issue with them okay thank you mm -hmm. All right, motion to approve the resolution for the technology lease agreement with Monroe number one BOCES. So moved, Charlie. Second, Shanna. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, I'll keep going. Uh, next up, <laughs> this one uh, I'd like to take credit for, but it's not my idea. Um, it's actually, I got this idea from a counterpart district in the county. And so in, what's happening right now is um, we have basic cybersecurity through NICER, our insurance company. Um, over the past couple of years, um, we have sought out and bought additional coverage to, um, to protect ourselves. Um, that additional coverage, um, you know, I think when we first did it about four years ago, we had three companies that responded and put in offers and, you know, we went through the checklist and picked you know the best value um, this year we had one most companies are getting out of the cybersecurity business because they can't keep up with it they can't you know claims aren't matching what they're charging so we're seeing rates just skyrocketing and, and this year especially um, so when we were actually discussing this at a countywide meeting 
um, it was Brighton came, had this suggestion, they are in essence self-insuring for cybersecurity because we anticipate that when we go to try to get an additional rider uh, for additional coverage, it won't be there um, in the very near future. Most people or companies are just gonna get out of that business. So, um, and so you know, I had the conversation with our uh, attorneys to get the resolution and our auditors to say, okay, um, you know, what does that look like? Did some research, you know, what did it cost a couple of districts in the area that got attacked? Um, I think everybody knows who those districts might be because it did make news to rebuild their network, to um, hire people to come in and do the investigation um, and to kind of isolate and trace and how much equipment did you have to toss and take out line. Um, and so we were looking at that and, um, and it averaged about $2 million um, as a starting point of, because you're wiping out every server a lot of the um, infrastructure too that's been compromised. So it, it was no uh, small number. Um, so that's where the number we got to initially do this. Um, we used to have an insurance reserve fund, you know, before I got here, 2011, 12. Um, that reserve was collapsed and funded into the employee retirement reserve. And in essence, we've left it empty for all those years with nothing in it. Um, so what this resolution is, is creating a very specific insurance reserve, specifically for cybersecurity and not for any other insurance purposes. In essence, we're starting down the road to protect ourselves um, for the eventuality when insurance companies get out of the cybersecurity business um, in the near future. Um, it's just one less risk I wanted to try to mitigate because mm -hmm. um, I mean, this were we're attacked frequently on the cybersecurity side, like all districts are. So just one of those things we were looking at the, uh, you know, with long range planning and everything else, trying to shore up every little nook and cranny we can to help protect the district. So you're setting up a fund that you will use in the future when the other stuff goes. Correct, in the anticipation that we won't be able to buy that additional coverage anymore. Okay. And then if God forbid anything happens, You'd be right. We take Thank it you. from here. Thank you. So this is in addition to the insurance we have right now. Correct. And then is your intention to so two million kind of covers us on that average? Is the right. intention to kind of grow that a little bit just in case as we? Yeah, you know it'll make the interest from year to year, but we'll always you know as part of our January planning when we go over all the reserves and have that discussion of what makes sense, you know what you know costs are looking like and and things like that. Um, you know I did put the information in there of what it's yeah. legally allowed to be. It's 5% of the budget, so that is the max target. Um, it's one of the few reserves that the uh, comptroller in the state say, okay, here's your max amount, what you could do. Um, so, I mean, that is a, a very high target right now. Um, so this felt like a, a good initial amount. I think it's definitely a good idea because it's like a virus. Like it, they're mm -hmm. constantly evolving mm -hmm. past our security and we're, measures. Yeah, we're low-hanging fruit. Schools and municipalities mm -hmm. where there's a lot of people yeah. attached to these all day is very low-hanging fruit for uh, people to attack. It also lines up with what we heard from some of the colleges. Is certainly, uh, this is one of the fastest-growing uh, areas in, in yeah, technical careers. colleges and careers as well, yeah. and this is why. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is nice that we're teaching that in our encore classes. Yeah, too. right. But I, know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I, you know, I, we working with the banking industry and you know, constantly sitting on webinars of what's happening. And um, one of the last ones I did with J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, their director of security said it best. He goes, you know, we send our kids for jobs at like McDonald's and Wegmans, but there's countries that their teenagers go to jobs to do this full time, mm -hmm. just try to fish and scam people that you know they'll go to an office complex and someplace and that's what they that's their you know high school job per se mm -hmm. yeah. um so yeah Brian, is, this, is this for um both internal and external threats or just external threats all threats all threats anything that would be a breach of the network you know compromise us whether it's internal or external Yeah, I was just making sure there weren't any other questions. Yep. <laughs> motion to approve the resolution for the creation of an insurance reserve. So moved, Shanna. Second. Carol, all in favor? Aye. 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 
All right. Thank you. Sorry for rushing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is um, our internal audit review. Uh, was recently done and reviewed with the audit committee and the Bonadio group is our internal auditors. Um, the area of focus this year, they were uh, evaluating policies and procedures around individualized education program. So they sampled about 25 students, went through to make sure we were meeting all the U.S. Department of Education guidelines and they also um, requested some documentation and they were satisfied that we had all of our ducks in a row when it came to IEP implementation as outlined for those uh, 25 students sampled. Another thing they did while they, uh, besides that testing, was they did our yearly risk assessment update. Um, they score areas of the uh, district from a low to a high risk and um, ranking those areas. Um, this report helps us and the audit committee to identify future areas of testing. And so um, based on that discussion, I think next year they're gonna do a, a review uh, of our extra classroom activity funds um, is what they're gonna target to do um, next year. This year they picked the IEPs because of some turnover in the staffing of that department, um, really on the uh, administrative assistant side, considerable turnover. And so they thought that was uh, reason enough to take a look to see, make sure we were still maintaining um, good quality um, processes. Okay. All good? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the internal audit report and risk assessment. So moved. So moved Linda? Second. Charlie? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next up is um, informational. Um, in the fall, uh, when our current Director of Operations at Transportation announced his retirement. We thought it would be a great time to just kind of do, we haven't had it done in a while, look at a, an analysis of our entire tra student transportation program. So we tasked uh, Transportation Advisory Services um, to do a top-down analysis of everything we do around transportation. Um, they've done multiple for many districts in our area and um, throughout the country actually as well. Um, so a couple of things, you know, we had a kickoff meeting with multiple district stakeholders and gave them a whole bunch of data points for them to look at and analyze. And they, they had interviews with bus drivers, with staff over there, building principals, uh, and other administrators that work with transportation. So some of the things that they reviewed and uh, had recommendations for us. Uh, the facility itself, which we just did a lot of capital work, is in good working order, and they just said, you know, review your needs periodically, which what we do as part of the building condition survey. Um, they ma maintained our DOT inspections over the past three years specifically were fantastic with um, those approval rates. Um, so our maintenance program is very good. Um, transportation financials, like our state reporting with some of the data, uh, to monitor the other miles that aren't aidable is just something they told us. Um, you know, when we do field trips, those miles aren't aidable. Um, and so they uh, just said you might want to look at those a little bit more um, and review the output reports with staff at least once a year. Uh, fleet management, uh, review the spare bus fleet and evaluate the replacement plan. This is one area where I think we're gonna take immediate action. Um, we have too many buses. We've begun to surplus some of those down. Um, and you know, I think we were holding on to them in the hopes we'd hire more drivers. Um, but with how many drivers we have, we have too many buses in, in surplus um, as backups and extra. Um, so that's something we're gonna look because each one of those buses costs us about $3,000 a year in insurance coverage. So if we could take those off the books, we'll see a little savings there. Um, industry standard is about 25% of your active routes to be uh, in reserve, uh, and we are well above that right now. So we're gonna try to bring that down to industry standards over the summer. Um, labor agreement, they made suggestions on future negotiations um, for recruitment and retention. So we're gonna look at that as part of that process. Management structure was another area um, they created an, an additional organizational chart for us um, for the transportation staff um, and that in essence uh, creates another level of assistant manager. Because um, I, I did notice here they said one of the things 
Uh, we are the fifth largest in-house transportation service in the state. So most districts our size outsource it to like a first student type of um, uh, business. We are the fifth largest that run it ourselves. And they said it might be beneficial to have that extra person in the office, maybe offset them, uh, somebody who could cover a little later and somebody who comes in the morning um, and then is overlapped by a director working um, somewhat normal hours, but uh, in transportation, it's never normal uh, <laughs> right now. So they just thought that would have been, it would really beef up the, um, the staff over there uh, and help with the overall organization and structure. Um, they reviewed our board policies, just said always, you know, take a look at walker distances and route creation. Uh, they did recommend for routing to do audits three times a year um, and constantly review our best practices and, you know, always look at regional sharing. Um, you know, we do a lot with Penfield um, right now about because we drive through each other's districts quite a bit. Same thing with the Aronicoites. Um, so we try to do as much as we can there. And then they also uh, put a little addendum in there, uh, much to my chagrin, about electric, electric bus conversion, because um, it's just such a crazy topic um, to go down. Um, but they just highlighted you know, the significant infrastructure improvements that would need to be made, um, both with power going into our facility and the power at the facility um, to be able to maintain that. So um, great job, it was very thorough. Um, and they presented back to uh, the team over at transportation and our um, other stakeholders that work with that as well. Does that get down to the to the bus drivers themselves get to see the results of yep. the? Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, staff was sharing it with them um, once it went finalized, and um, we had those initial conversations. That's great. And then under routing. Is that, is that where it covers kind of like, they reviewed our routes, like our bus routes, yep. to help us make recommendations if we could be. Mm -hmm. They, be they like the way we do it because we kind of start from scratch every year um, rather than just rolling over and always doing what you do. Um, but they said there's always, you know, something you could learn every year. Um, so um, that's why they said the ridership audits are very important because mm -hmm. it helps you track those, you know, anomalies. At least you're looking at the data and maybe you know, beginning year, a route had, you know, 80% of the students were on there. But then all of a sudden, you do it mid-year, and it's down to 40%. Is there something you could do to make consolidate or collapse? Okay. Is to look at those data points by doing the ridership audits. Did they make any recommendations with the Willink and Thomas? You know, how we merged them this year. Thomas, the, those students all ride the same buses. Now. They honestly, they, they actually. Don't all. No, well, and Thomas. And they Bob actually did like, not. Not um, all of them, though. On the There's ridership buses, study. There's just a couple buses. Yeah, on the, um, the ridership study, um, they, they actually said that you could probably um, plan for um, there's less students riding out of Thomas mm -hmm. um, when they looked at some of the data points, but the, you know, they know what all districts are up against, and you know, yeah. it's not the best case scenario. Right. Um, but they didn't come out. They didn't say anything like maybe you should do your practice over there this way because they definitely saw it mm -hmm. and got the feedback on it. Cool. I know we made changes to it to try to. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're always. We've I mean, written, yeah, making. There's enough people over there watching that dismissal every single day that we're we're constantly trying to uh, see what we could do to improve. I read the whole report, so I have to say that was a perfect overview of everything that was in there. It was all the notes that I had taken. So good job, thank you. <laughs> and that was for information. So unless there's any right. other questions, thank you. One more extra. One more. I, I have to apologize. I think um, inadvertently there's an extra class uh, account that had already been approved that got uploaded to this board docs. So I went in there and changed oh. that. The, the Schrader one that was uploaded, we did that in November. So that was inadvertently added. They were only approving one new account uh, for Webster Thomas, and that is their National Art Honor Society. Um, so I have um, attached that one, and they've, their charter is there filled out and ready for approval. Perfect. Actually, we heard about yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Sydney. Sydney yeah. actually mentioned it in her report tonight. Yep. Hmm. All right, motion to approve the extracurricular funding account. 
So moved. Carol? Second. Second. Linda? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> Next up is the first reading of the 23-24 Board of Education calendar. Um, there really wasn't much to point out other than 4th of July is kind of in a wonky spot. So um, the meeting that we, you know, our reorg meeting that we have to have within the first 15 days, we chose the 10th for now so that it, it gives us time, barring any unforeseen circumstances, but avoids the whole week of the 4th because it just was a tricky time. Other than that, unless anyone had any questions, built in a couple of retreats. All right, motion to approve the first reading of the 23-24 Board of Education calendar and move it forward for a second reading. So moved, Shanna, second, Charlie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Carol, you're good, okay. All right, board member highlights. Who wants to go first? Anybody? I'll go, go first. So we've touched on so much stuff already. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just for the, the audit report, we, you know, Brian went over the audit committee. We do need um, some public volunteer, well, we, we lost all of our public volunteers on the audit committee, so they, you know, people can volunteer to be a part of that. Um, Clem North has a STEM night coming up on um, April 28th, and they are looking for volunteers, so I wanted to point that out, and I'm excited about a STEM night. Um, CAD, I just wanted, CAD was phenomenal, which Thank we all you. know, right? I, was, I had that on my list too, yeah, but. Yeah, it's amazing. I did want to mention there were some resident comments. Like I, I know, I recognize people that don't have students in the district that were there. And I was like, oh, you know, what are you, I, are you here for a family member? And they were like, oh no, I just wanted to come down. And they were amazed. Like they loved the artwork. They loved all of the, the businesses that were there too, you know, and, and our vendors, like they really loved that. So I thought it was great that it was like non. HR was one of our vendors this year. I right? know. Oh. But the pain Penguin overshadowed your table. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, I thought that was really great that we actually got residents like the community. We, you know, we got community, yeah, and great. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. And it was an, an amazing event. I love it. And um, and we did our Schlegel Owl tour. And um, the one thing I wanted to mention for some of the members that I don't and I don't know who went to the Schlegel tour, but. One of the things I love that Schlegel did was they had this um, this crew. They they have this crew philosophy that they go by, and um, and I really loved it because it it started with the teachers too. You know, the teachers are part of a crew, and they've got all these philosophies like there are no passengers, um, and and they use those key phrases around the building. And the teachers do it so like the fifth grade is a crew, and there's no passengers, and they leave no trace. And then the students do it too, so the students see that being represented by the teachers. And I loved it. I thought. It was a really nice way, um, you know, to 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 feel like a team mm -hmm. without the usual verbiage that people say. You know, like you need to you're not carrying your weight. You know, instead it's like, hey, no passengers, and it's a nice way to just remind us all, like, yeah, I need to I need to step up and do my part or leave no trace. Like, I want to take it home to my kids because they're constantly. <laughs> Sophia's like, I don't need to pick up. I didn't leave that there, and now I'm like, leave no trace. It doesn't matter who did it, and I wish I'd started it when I was younger because it's it's such a great philosophy. So I really loved that, and I you know they showed the history of it and where it came from, and um. I thought for teamwork, it's a, just a nice way to feel like a part of a team and that because really that's how it is. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody needs to do their part and then you're effective in it. And I just really liked that philosophy and I, I definitely implemented that with my with my husband and my children. <laughs> that's funny. I know, because it really goes into all, and I bet you the kids find themselves bringing that into their own life, like at home too. You know, it definitely makes you feel <laughs> accountable, is it? Nice, I Francine. Know. Well, I love I it. So I really thought that was I. It was yours and Kate. Yeah. Oh well, I I think it's great. I really liked it a lot. Um, so that was fantastic. And then um, the last thing was we had our you know strategic planning has been a lot of fun. And um, and Larry had some some notes too, which makes it a little bit easier. So um, a pr I'm going to read from what we've, we've talked about, but a primary focus this year has been to explore the evolving options available to our students once they graduate. And I think it's really important that it's not, that there's so many different avenues. It's not just college. Um, it could be trades. It could be any career that a student is interested in and making sure that they're prepared and that we're helping them, you know, get to the future that they want. Um, and this began with a graduate brunch in January and continued last week with visits to RIT, U of R, and Sony, SUNY Geneseo, and we're also working on a visit with MCC. Um, and 
and in that graduate brunch, it was having students back in to give us their feedback about how they felt prepared and what we could have done to help them better. The final piece of this exploration will be conversations with several local businesses um, later this spring. And in each instance, we've been interested in two things. What are we doing well to prepare our graduates? And what could we do differently? Um, and then we're gonna present a summary of that work to the full board during our end of year metrics workshop. Um, and for it, as Larry said, for a sneak peek, um, overall, our kids feel well prepared by their Webster education. And we heard that um, from their Webster graduates that volunteered to come in and talk to us. Also, though, like at SUNY Geneseo, they sent out an email asking students, you know, any Webster graduates to come in and talk to us as well. And so they had eight students come in, and, and that was the message from those students and the survey that we put out. So that part was good. They also did give feedback on how we could e do even take additional steps to make them more prepared. So that was really good because we want to know how do we improve that. Um, and then next year, the areas of focus will include UPK through 12 literacy, strengthening our multi-tiered systems of support, and reviewing our overall academic program. So I will say that one of the most this has been the most exciting thing as, as a board member is to really get down and look at like what are we doing well and what can we do better um, and I'd love for it to even expand more like if we could get more students with trades to come in and talk to mm -hmm. us um, because a lot of it is definitely college heavy but it, we learned so much good feedback and some of the challenges that colleges are experiencing are the same challenges that we're experiencing in school right now so students even coming into college struggling to communicate with each other especially in a face-to-face -face format um, because so much of it is on, uh, online and colleges have been focusing too on like teaching online etiquette to students like how do you talk to people like your online etiquette is just as important as your face-to-face -face etiquette and how we talk to each other and communicate so mental health has been a huge focus for them they've seen that with students as well so the same things that we're we're you know working on in, in high school and how do we better prepare them going on to this next branch of life right now, especially with the challenges they've just experienced with COVID. So I, I just, I can't say enough about the feedback that we're getting and you know where I think we'll be able to take that information and help our kids, um, especially with the perseverance. You know, they're definitely seeing that that is a struggle for kids, that they just, they're, when it's tough right now, they just wanna mm. be like, it's too tough and they wanna call it quits right now. And, and, and um, so how do we help our kids? How do we help teach them those tools so that they keep trying? Um, so I thought it was great feedback. I'm excited to hear about it, you know, when we do the summary. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> thank you. No, it was very thorough. I appreciate it. Um, I just want to say thank you, Erin, on behalf of the policy committee. Um, we have gotten through most, all of student services. We just have a couple of small sections left, and our first draft will be done. We will present at the next workshop. So thank you. That was a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we appreciate you that. You sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little crazy there. Um, and the only other thing is, you know, as we're wrapping up, um, school is coming to an end very quickly, mm -hmm. and our last musical is this weekend, so I encourage everybody. They have mm -hmm. all been incredible. If you have time, go see Freaky Friday at yeah. Thomas. I'm sure it will be amazing. And also congratulations again to the 78 students that were inducted into the National Honor Society. It was pretty incredible to see that many students get inducted. It's not mm -hmm. e an easy process, and they did it. So yeah. and they take the process seriously too. It's, I was trying to remember back, like I don't know if I did all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, I, and the service yeah. that they did, um, Schrader, they. They had to give back to the school community, and so with the UPK students being in the building, they made them all book bags and put books in them and gave each student so one. It was amazing and so well received by all of the families. So, yeah. and they good said job. they had an average of eight books per UPK yeah. kid. Oh that's, I mean, yeah. they had collected that so, many books. So it's great. Awesome. It was a great. It was a great event. So that's all I have. Community Arts Day was. Uh, Real, yeah, I went there with our grandchildren, and we saw the Garth Fagan dancers, and they just they just loved it. And then I was telling my daughter, and she said, "Oh, I loved Community Arts Day <laughs> when we went." And now she's in her everybody's in their forties now, so it's it's a it's a great thing. I was so happy to revisit it as a board member. People were. Thanks for coming, mm -hmm. and also as a grandparent, and yeah, I, yeah. 
And the Schlegel Road, you you covered that beautifully, <laughs> but it was it was great. It's pretty yeah. amazing crew. I think I see us becoming sort of a crew. Oh, I think I get it. <laughs> no, I mean really. Yeah. Right. I like I'm working that. on it. Yeah. I mean, we're I think, all passengers. Yeah. None of us are passengers. Yeah. We're, we're all, all passengers. passengers. We're, we're, passengers. we're all passengers. <laughs> oh, we're passengers, all right. <laughs> but I, I, I feel, I feel it here too. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a great, I'm glad you mentioned that, girl. That's, that's a great that's point. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick plug for the upcoming Webster Jazz uh, guest artist concert that's coming that uh, involves both schools and it's on uh, Wednesday, April 26th. This April? I don't really have much else. Um, reminder, yeah, our next meeting is May 2nd. That will start at 5 o'clock. Yep. Um, it'll also be the Oak Tree night, mm -hmm. so we'll award our Oak Tree winners. Then the policy workshop that Linda mentioned will be May 9th, so the following Tuesday, and then May 16th, the budget vote. All day at Schrader, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Fun Tuesdays in May. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Triple Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. uh, next is the consent agenda. So everyone's had a chance to read through that. Are there any questions? Good. All right. Motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved, Shanna. Second, Carol. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We have no speakers tonight, so that means I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. So moved, Linda. Second, Carol. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.